You know, I didn't expect this. Why is this happening? A lot has happened since I posted my first Bell 5 video. Rogers is trying to compete even with their crazy internet outages, which are seemingly continuing to this day. Different routers have come out opening up more internal speed tier possibilities like 10 gigabit. I got monetized on this channel. Thank you all for that, by the way. And most notably, Bell has added a bunch of speed tiers to their packages. By the way, unless there's some major update, this is probably gonna be my last Bell video for a long time, possibly ever. So get your fill. I do plan on doing some more on this channel than just internet provider videos. So I guess the question is, did I upgrade to eight gigabit? Can I even justify the costs associated with it? I mean, Rogers is charging an insane $400 a month. So Bell must be priced around the same, right? I mean, it has to be more. Rogers doesn't have fiber to the home, but at least they don't have the footprint that Bell does. So surely Bell must be a ripoff, right? Um, well, this is awkward. Well, hopefully I can keep my network wired up with the same equipment, right? Yo, what's poppin', dude? Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? I can't complain, you know, just living the dream, boiling out here. It's the middle of July. It's hot. It's like people stew. Yeah, it's for real. It's <laughs> pure people stew. Yeah. Yeah, man. How's, uh, how's your internet going? I'm floored. I haven't had to touch anything. It's been amazing, so I'm just enjoying that. That's what you say now. <laughs> hey, don't jinx me. Come on, it, everything's fine. I, I don't need to do anything to this setup. You know, I, I don't think I'm gonna do another video about Bell or any fiber to the home because I covered everything already. But so you finally actually get to keep the wires exactly where they are. Yep, I'm not touching a damn thing. <laughs> you laugh, okay. For now. <laughs> for now. Well, hopefully I can keep my network wired up with the same equipment, right? Mother So this is the Giga Hub from Bell and wait, don't let the reps lie to you. You don't need the Giga Hub. The Home Hub 4000 works just fine. On the topic of the Home Hub and the Giga Hub, there's something interesting coming up about them later on in the video that I don't think has been widely addressed. It's been asked about, been asked about a lot actually, but not addressed in a very public way. Again, I'm gonna touch on this later. While I was testing eight gig, of course, I got the full download speed and pretty close to full speed. I think Bell needs to do some tweaking on their end because I'm kind of splitting hairs on speed, but it's not the full eight gig. I know there are three differences between the Giga Hub and the Home Hub 4000. The first is it supports Wi-Fi 6E instead of just Wi-Fi 6. It has this Giga badge on it. And there's a ton of issues with the firmware, unless they've been fixed by the time this video goes up. But this thread about it rebooting is 16 pages long and that's just the ones that are reporting it. Anyway, I grabbed the Asus AXE 16000 and it was huge. Has two 10 gigabit ports, has NAT acceleration like my AX89X and includes Wi-Fi 6E. It's too bad the Wi-Fi was hot garbage no matter what firmware I was on and what settings I used. So this thing got yeeted back to Amazon like incredibly fast. And I put my pair of AX89X routers back into my network. I alluded to this in the three gigabit videos that the internet just isn't ready for speeds beyond gigabit. Like some services will take advantage, but don't expect to pull eight gigabit off one server to one client consistently. And if you're thinking about your gaming console, also remember that the physical ports don't even support speeds close to eight gigabit. You have to remember at the end of the day, all of these businesses are just gonna provision their networks to only push it at a certain speed. It's kind of a dollars and cents thing. It's well known that a high majority of people don't even have 500 megabit connections, let alone gigabit. I mean, why would any larger company spend money to accommodate the higher speed internet customers when their priority is to maintain a stable connection to everybody that's trying to connect? For example, I did a macOS update from Apple's server the other day, and it was at some ungodly time of night. The speed was painful. To be honest, the optimal setup for a larger household, I truly still believe is 500 megabit, or even 1.5 gigabit. If you got like five or six people that are using Wi-Fi for like a lot of video playback, you know, yeah, get at least the 1.5 gigabit. 
you're doing professional workflows where you're connecting the servers for say healthcare scans or massive video collaborations, then maybe consider three or eight gigabit. But that's even if your work can accommodate the speed on their servers. In that case, see the part where I just talked about cost. More of what you're going to notice on Bell's network is the latency difference. When I did the first video on this channel about the iPhone XS Max in 2021, I was on 1.5 gigabit and all of the 4K videos I viewed on YouTube, they just felt like they were saved to my phone because of how fast the scrubbing speed reacted. You know, it's not just about raw speed. Overall, 8 gigabit outside of a few things I need to do for work feels exactly the same as 3 gigabit did. And if I'm being honest, 3 gigabit felt like 1.5 did. It's absolutely overkill for majority of people. If you can lock it in for a great price that you can justify, then hey, by all means, but my recommendation would be to use a different router than the Home Hub 4000 or the GigaHub to handle Wi-Fi. You know, I still recommend the Asus AX89X, even though it's older, it's been solid. And hopefully prices come down on it soon because yikes, that's way more than I paid for it. Thanks a lot, supply chain issues. You know, it's just a shame that you can't bypass Bell's equipment. I mean, there isn't a way to bypass Bell's equipment and it's, firmware issues, right? And it's weird Wi-Fi issues, right? I mean, there is no way to... Well, about that. Here it goes. This is the... Wait, wait, wait. Notice I beat this out. There is a reason. Actually, a few reasons. Number one, what I'm about to talk about is kind of a gray area. It may or may not be allowed on Bell's network. As a matter of fact, pretty sure it violates their terms of service. Number two, you know, I've had contact with some higher level executives at Bell, so me posting this is kind of risky for even me. I don't get any special treatment or anything, but in the spirit of full transparency, I'm letting you know that I'm taking a major risk even talking about this. Number three, I am not going to address any questions related to this, at least this part of the video. And also, I will not and do not take responsibility for anything listed here that could get you into any issues with Bell or their partners. As far as where to find out how to do this, well, Internet search engines are your friend, and so is Discord. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves in the comment section, but I'm not chiming in about this, period. Now, with all that being said, let's do something stupid. So this device is capable of accepting an XGS pawn cable, which allows up to and probably beyond Bell's eight gig service. Moving from the left to the right, you get the fiber port, a 10 gigabit port, a 2.5 gigabit port, factory reset, a chunky power button, and a power input. And that's it. You have to program this thing to make it work, and I'm not going into what that entails, but you'll probably have to open it. Look, it's a stable device, and it works well for eight gigabit, but I noticed that my upload speed was drastically slower than the normal speed I would achieve with the home hub. This is more for testing, and to be honest, going from around five and a half gigabit upload to eight gigabit in today's climate of internet usage is splitting hairs. Well, at least it is for now. The benefits I could think of offhand to, you know, bypassing Bell's equipment is, well, for one, no extra Wi-Fi network. One of the annoyances after Bell released the Home Hub 4000 and the GigaHub was the inability to turn off the hidden Wi-Fi that it uses to connect to their Bell wireless TV service, especially for customers like myself who use the Bell 5 TV app and don't need the TV hardware because I have smart TVs all over the house. It does wonders for reducing Wi-Fi congestion from other networks interfering with your router signal. Looking at you, tall apartment buildings. Another benefit, and I'm sorry for any Bell reps that are watching this, but I've never had perfect luck routing using Bell's equipment. Ports I needed to open wouldn't stay open, and if I wanted a robust setup with more than one 10 gigabit connection in my home network, the way the home hub seems to manage that with an external switch, it just wasn't great. Go back to where I was talking about the 16 page thread about the home hub issues. This honestly just doesn't inspire confidence. Now, typically you would tag VLAN 35 like you did back with the home hub 3000 when it was bypassed by removing the SFP. By the way, Outdoor Wanderer did a video demonstrating this. So if you're staying on the home hub 3000, his video is definitely the one you wanna check out. It's linked in the description. 
And also, my ASUS AX89X did not like performing the tagging, and eventually it would just randomly disable the NAT acceleration. So something you're gonna want to know about your router is if it has enough power to handle multi-threading PPPoE. And I hate that I even have to say this because, I'm being honest, this just annoys me. I'll explain this later. But anyway, you're still gonna have to do the PPPoE authentication like you would with the Home Hub 4000 or the GigaHub, but without Bell's weird network management. In this case, the programming that was done to make mine work, it actually tagged the packets in the device so the ASUS wouldn't have to handle that. You know, I did notice something else kind of interesting. Measuring latency with Bell Fiber to the home is hard when you're using speedtest.net because the issue is like the highest ping time that you're gonna pretty well see wired is two milliseconds, while the lowest was zero milliseconds. So there isn't really a ton of room to see any variance between equipment. So for this test, I hardwired my Xbox Series X to my ASUS router and ran their speed test and had some very interesting results. I took five speed tests with the Home Hub 4000 connected, and then I took five with the Home Hub 4000 removed from the equation, and then I just calculated an average. There is a difference. Now, will it measure up to a better gameplay experience is really gonna depend on your own reflexes, your display, your controller's response time. My only thing I can say is if there's an advantage, why not capitalize? Now, a glimmer of hope. Because I don't think anybody actually wants to violate Bell's terms of service. Like, I don't want to. And I'm back on the home hub now because I'm not trying to lose my internet connection. There might be a chance, might be a chance that Bell gives us what we want. If they would include proper IPv6 support on our home connections, that would be amazing. But that's a topic that if I'm being real, I'm honestly just sick of discussing. I mean, Rogers is sadly the better provider for this. And to be honest, Bell will be forced to do it someday. I think we just have to hurry up and wait. Back in September of 2022, Bell acquired a company called Distributel. On their homepage at the time of recording this video, there's no mention of fiber to the home packages. However, in speaking with a few Bell technicians, they've been given these Nokia ONT devices, which are really similar to the bypass device I just talked about earlier. So unless they announce some other brand of fiber, which will probably just use Bell's network, there's a chance that this device could be the answer. It could be the answer many of us want without violating Bell's terms of service. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Bell's service, but if they really, really want to kick Rogers in the face, they would have to give the users what they want with a real bridge mode instead of this antiquated PPPoE method. Like, go and search, in quotes, PPPoE outdated. And do some reading up on it. It's making users like myself have to purchase more expensive hardware because of the sheer overhead that PPPoE inflicts. There are comments from some of my previous videos that have said, hey, will Router X work with Bell Fiber to the home? And as much as I love to recommend it, but I can't. Bell not only doesn't support the better DHCP standard, which doesn't need that overhead, they frankly just don't seem to care. There's also the IPv6 thing, which will cost Bell a ton of money, and the longer they wait, the more expensive it's probably gonna get. As I said, I'm sick of talking about it, but we're about to enter 2024, and Bell's insistence on holding out is as f***ing stupid as Roger's telling us that their service is stable. Outages even this year have been pretty wild, Rogers. So on the IPv6 topic, 34% of the world is on IPv6 and 46% of the United States is. And eventually those will be percentages of people that we on Bell will not be able to communicate with if Bell doesn't stop with their nonsense. But wait, there's one more piece of just utter stupidity on Bell's end. And this isn't even super technical. It's just in a word, pathetic. Notice on the front of the home hub and the giga hub, there's a button. If for some reason you're not able to or not comfortable going into the interface to make changes. One of those features is the ability to recover your password. But here's where it takes a turn. The first thing it did was send a plain SMS unencrypted text to my cell phone with not only my Wi-Fi password, but the admin password for my router. Here's an article from 2017, you know, six years ago, talking about why you shouldn't use text messages for two-factor authentication. I'll link it in the description of this video, so hopefully a Bell executive watches it and gets a f***ing clue. But like, that wasn't bad enough. Exactly a minute later, they send me an email with this large heading reading, 
Here are your passwords. With the credentials completely unencrypted. The joke is they actually have a page covering security and privacy at the bottom of the homepage, which in two words is f***ing hilarious. I'm not going to be a bell apologist. This channel has barely gotten off the ground and sure, I'd love to tell you all what you want to hear, but the reality is none of the internet service providers are perfect and these things need to be pointed out for people like you and I, the consumers. Oh, and by the way, um, about the channel, I'm not begging for subs or likes either. So you know what, Just don't subscribe to me or even like this video unless you actually got some value or entertainment from it. Kind of back on topic here, if Rogers wants a way to gain back home internet market share that Bell has been stealing, speed up your fiber rollout. Don't cut corners. You know, test your f***ing updates. Bell, if you want to stick it to Rogers even more, first and foremost, fix your security stupidity. Above everything, do that. And for the love of God, just do the IPv6 thing already. Oh, and if you're on Rogers and Bell Fiber to the Home is in your area, even with everything I just named, it's far superior to Rogers. Bell is being super aggressive about promos right now at the time of shooting this, so seriously, just switch. If you can somehow get 3 gigabit or even 8 gig for less, might as well go for it, even if it is overkill. My name is Sean. This has been Tech Mixer. I'm out.